Step 2. Phase and group velocities. In this step, we will get back to interference and see what effect it has on the speed with which waves propagate. So at first, let's consider a single wave of a single frequency propagating through space and ask the question, at what speed does this wave travel? We saw in the previous step that we can write down such a wave in this form. We've got the amplitude times sine of its phase. And maybe you remember from uh, previous studies that the uh, wave velocity is given as the ratio of the uh, wavelength lambda and uh, its period, capital T. So we saw in a previous step that lambda is related to the wave number k as follows. Lambda is equal to 2 pi over k. And similarly, uh, the uh, period of oscillation, capital T, is related to omega, the angular frequency, as 2 pi over omega. So substituting for lambda and substituting for t, we can obtain uh, the expression for wave velocity in terms of omega and k as v, the wave velocity, is omega over k. So now we know how a single wave propagates. Let's consider when we have two waves that superpose together. Before we do that, let's look at an example. So we have a wave propagating at angular frequency 0 0.1 and the wave number is 1. And then, as you can see, I marked one black point here. This is a point of constant phase, and it's propagating through, through space like that. So now, what happens when we superpose two waves? How, at what velocity and at what speed does uh, the resultant superposition travel? Well, let's take two waves, and this time, uh, we allow their angular frequencies to be different, their wave numbers to be different, but for simplicity we consider these two waves to have same amplitude, E0. When we add them together, we arrive at the following expression. Here both of them have same amplitude, so we can just take out E0 out and write down the two waves in this form. And what we do next is we uh, apply a trigonometric identity. That allows us to write this superposition E as a product of two uh, wave signals. One is a sine signal and the other one is a cos signal. For the sine, the um, angular frequency uh, is the following, omega 1 plus omega 2 over 2, and the new wave number is k1 plus k2 over 2. And for the cos signal, we take the difference of the uh, angular frequencies omega 1 and omega 2, and the wave numbers k1 and k2. So let's have a look at the shape uh, of this superposition. We said that we've got these two terms that determine uh, our superposition. If we only look at the sign, we see that it's oscillating at a much faster uh, uh, frequency, because here we are adding, adding the... Um, uh, angular velocities omega 1 and omega 2, and we are adding the wave numbers k1 and k2. Whereas the other term, the cosine term, we call that the slow oscillating term because uh, the, uh, angular, the new angular frequency is dependent on the difference between omega 1 and omega 2 and the difference between k1 and k2. So, we define the phase velocity as the velocity of this fast oscillating term. So previously we said that for a single wave it's just omega over k, but here we saw that this omega 1s and omega 2s result in this new uh, angular frequency for the fast oscillations and this new wave number for the fast oscillations. So Vp, the phase velocity, is equal to as omega 1 plus omega 2 divided by k1 plus k2. And the group velocity is defined in a similar way, but for the slow oscillations. So Vg, which we denote group velocity, is omega 1 minus omega 2 divided by k1 minus k2. So from this you can immediately see that even though we have a single wave, single superposition, there are these two notions of a phase velocity and group velocity which are not necessarily the same. They can be different, and we will see that later in this step. So let's illustrate it with an, with an example. 
we consider two waves E1 and E2. They have different angular frequencies. E1 has angular frequency 0.1, whereas E2 has angular frequency 0.2. And they have different uh, wave numbers. E1 has 2.0 and E2 has 2.1. So let's plot this initially at time equals to zero. And we see, as we said, we expect the shape of the superposition to, to be composed of two waves. One is this fast oscillating blue line. And on top of that, we have this uh, slowly varying uh, envelope. Again, this blue fast oscillating term is uh, given by the sine, uh, sine term uh, from previous slides. And this orange uh, dashed line gives us the envelope, which is proportional to the cosine. Now let's get things moving, and in time, again, it propagates uh, uh, through space. So now, let's actually compute what the uh, phase and group velocities are for our example. We just substitute into our expressions for uh, phase velocity, so omega 1 plus omega 2. We just add them together, so 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2 is 0 0.3. K1 plus K2 Again, we add them together, 2.0 plus 2.1 is 4.1. And this is approximately 0.07. For the group velocity, we do the same thing, and we obtain that the group velocity is equal to 1. So we can see that the group velocity in this case is larger than the phase velocity, and in fact it's about 14 times larger. So let's get back to our propagating wave. And here you can see what actually happens to the points uh, on, on uh, our wave. So this black dot oscillating up and down represents our phase velocity. This black point is moving through space with the phase velocity. So you can see that it's moving up and down quite a lot, but actually it's not propagating through space very much because it's in this example equal to 0.07. Whereas this red square that occasionally you can see at the top that goes zooming uh, um, Sit, it's sitting on the envelope over there, and it goes zooming through space. That point represents the um, group velocity. Well, you can't actually see that it's 14 times faster, but mathematically that's true. And as we said, in this case that we picked, the phase velocity is smaller than the group velocity. But this is not always the case. Let's look at this following example. We kept the same angular frequencies for the two waves, but we changed the wave numbers. Now E1 has k equal to 0 0.1, and E2 has k equal to 0 0.2. Let's see what, what, what that looks like. As you can see, now the group velocity and the phase velocity are the same. The black point and the red square move uh, at the same velocity. So far, we have looked at cases when both velocities are in the same direction. Now, let's look at a very peculiar case. Again, we keep the angular frequencies fixed, but this time we change uh, k1 to 2.0 and k2 to 1.5. And let's see what happens. You see that, again, the black dot representing our uh, phase velocity is moving in the positive x direction, as was the case before. But on the other hand, this red square is moving backwards, because the group velocity in this case is actually negative. So you can see that you can have a lot of fun with the group and phase velocities. There are many different uh, scenarios depending on uh, omega 1 and omega 2, and k1 and k2. And so far we have been looking at superposition of only two waves. What happens if we consider superposition of more than two waves? Let's consider a particular example where our superposition is given as a sum of some very simple waves. Here we have a frozen time and basically set t equals to zero. So we only have sine of minus kx, where these k's vary from 2 to 3 in steps of 0 0.1. So really what we have is a sum of sine of minus 2x plus a sine of minus 2.1x and so on until we reach the 11th term of sine minus 3x. And in fact, what we get is the following, following shape. What we call this shape is a pulse. You can see that for most of x, 
the superposition is close to zero. There's, there are some disturbances, it's, there are some oscillations, but they're close to zero. And then suddenly, constructive interference kicks in, and you have this big pulse over there. And pulses are very important, because using pulses, we can in, uh, encode information. So it's very important in communication theory.